To God be the glory. Amen and amen. I honor the Father for each and every one of you. You all are the blessedness of the one who has called you right from the very beginning. You are the glory of Zion. You are the manifestation of the star that is shining upon creation because you are here to what? To rule and to reign. And I honor the Lord for you. Amen and amen. So today I want us to look at the word on consent, you know, rape and consent, rape and consent. And um, in that in itself, um, I believe I'm being privileged to share testimonies, um, just two that I believe I haven't shared before. I've shared in line with it before, but I wanted to, I want to put more light on it because I know the Lord is wanting to show mercy to a lot of people who have probably walked in the dimension of rape and been accused of it. And he wants to show mercy. And the reason why I talked about accusation is because a lot of you, you've been accused because it's not that you did it. No, not at all. But then somebody accused you that it is what you've done because they wanted to what? They wanted to cover their own tracks. They wanted to make themselves look good and make you look bad. Can you see that in itself? They want to make themselves look good. <laughs> Can you see that dimension? So it's a place, you know, I believe a lot of us have probably heard where, you know, probably a guy went with a girl and eventually, you know, and, you know, and people are like, hey, why are you dating that kind of girl? And he goes, me? No, no, she, she forced herself on me. <laughs> Can you see that dimension? And because of that testimony, probably the girl got angry and then eventually went be and began to tell everybody, hey, you know, he raped me. He raped me because of what? Unforgiveness, anger, and all of those things. And for that reason, some people have been what? Dealing with the accusations of rape without even you knowing because because that in itself was creating losses in your life. And it is to that that I just want to share uh, the testimonies with you so that you can be able to understand, uh, 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 even in the dimension of people who have actually walked raping people. And then the Lord, you've repented. You know, I believe very much that you have repented, you know, hence why you're here. And the Lord wants to what? He wants to bring about reconciliation. Yes. Because the Bible tells us, you know, I believe in the book of First Corinthians, and this is what it says. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, but who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will manifest the counsels of their hearts. And they shall have, they shall what? Then shall every man have praise of God. So from that scripture is helping you to understand that majority of the people, they have judged you either because of those accusations and or they have judged you even without knowing anything about you. Have you ever been in that dimension where people say, oh, I know you're, I know, I know you kind of people. I know you can, you know that statement. I know you kind of people. I know your type. I know your type, you know, and they basically conclude about you before <laughs> they even meet you. Can you see that? And this is the dimension of it because it's a place where the Lord, they have not, even some of them, they have probably not healed. Some of them, they're probably still going through healing. And for that reason, they, you know, they can blame you easily for things that they might still be going through. And most of the time, it's not because of them. No, we have to check ourselves that why is that happening? For some, for some people, it might not be that you've done anything wrong. And for some, it could be the fact that what? There is a root to it. And that is the root in which we have been visiting, the roots of accusation. Let's look at the story of Joseph, right? You know, I was, I've been sharing the story of Joseph, how Joseph ended up in Potiphar's house. Potiphar really liked him. The wife extremely liked him <laughs> and then was basically trying to lure him into bed. He kept saying no. And then from that moment, what did she do? She basically took the robe and began to accuse him and say, look at the person you brought. He was trying to sleep with me. And Potiphar did not even take time to inquire of the truth, but rather angry with him, threw him in prison. This is, the, this is the dimension of majority of you that have not done anything wrong, but people are accusing you because you refuse to bow. Can you see that? You refuse to bow. And for some people, you perhaps did this, but the way you treated that person allowed them to release the accusations against you. Can you see that dimension? But the, but the Lord wants to what? Wants to show you mercy. 
And the reason why I shared about the accusation in itself that we not, ought not to judge anything before it's time. This is where you see a lot of people, they put flags. I put, you know, red flag, red flag. Oh, he was showing signs of red flags. He was showing signs of yellow flags. You're putting flags. You're judging the situation even before you know the truth. Can you see that dimension? This is why I was encouraging concerning marriages that when you get married, rather than wake up in the morning and start having a go at one another, there is a reason why that situation came into being. And it's a place where you what? You basically, you what? You communicate with the Father. Lord, why is this woman? Why is this man? Why are they behaving this way? And the Lord in his mercy can sometimes not show you the truth yet because he's trying to heal you of something. And eventually he shows you the truth and then the person the truth. And together you're able to what? You're able to pray it through and overcome that which is trying to come against you. Because majority of the people, they just basically begin to attack one another. And I believe I've shared my own testimony here before. When I began to understand the behaviors of the person that was with me, I had to take it to God. You know, please, Lord, help me to understand what is going on. So it began to show me the truth concerning it. So even in my dimension where I want to share this story, you know, it's a place where like, for example, you know, for some people, they've been dealing with uh, immoralities and things like that. And one of the things the Lord was helping me to understand was this, you know, I believe, you know, I, I was given a dimension of, 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 of one of, of one of the roots because it happened when I was uh, at a very young age, rightly about five, six years of age. And I believe I shared my testimony concerning my uncle who was basically, you know, he would sit me down before I go to school and for about half an hour, we're watching porn together. I didn't know what happened. So he was sowing seeds. Can you see that? Because this is what the enemy does. Because he knows that you are the light of the world. He knows that you're here to rule, to reign. He knows that you're here to deliver many people, to bring them out of bondage. So he tries to catch them young. Can you see that? It happened in the Bible. With Moses, they understood this is the deliverer. He tried to kill him off. But what happened? The mother basically whisked him, put him on the river all the way to Pharaoh's house. <laughs> Can you see that? Even with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. What happened to Jesus? The Bible says, Herod, when the wise men went to his house, they began to look for all the children to and under and try to kill them off because he didn't want anybody else to sit on his throne. So because of who you are is sometimes why the enemy comes at you at a very young age. So it's not a fault of your own. Can I start with that? Because you have to understand the mercy of God. We can see that even some people, like I shared, they have repented of this. As we see on the cross, two dimensions. One was trying to get off the cross quickly and the other was acknowledging his own sin. And Jesus turned to the one who was acknowledging. And what did he say to him? He said, today you will be with me in paradise. So you can see, hence why I said some people, they've turned away from this. And the Lord wants to show you mercy. So from my own story, I was sharing when I was about five years of age. I was helping us to understand, you know, that it was when I was at, a, at that age, you know, five, five, about five, six, you know, when I was still in the world at that age, you know, I, I, we had a house help. And the house help that we had at that particular time, she would basically, she would commit, she would be committing all manners of immorality with me, sexual immorality that is. Because I remember there was a particular day, you know, when she was basically engaging in this act with me. Uh, it was a place someone came knocking at the door. <laughs> so what did she do? She quickly told me to hide under the chair or under the, under the seat and things like that until the person left. And then she continued to act. Can you see that dimension? Many years later, the Lord began to help me to understand that, hey, it was one of the one of the reasons was because of what she did. So I had to forgive her. So even when I told my mom, I had to lead my mom into a prayer of forgiveness. Like, mom, please forgive her. You know, it's not her fault because you know why? The enemy was using her. So we blessed her. We blessed her children, every dimension of her and released her to the Lord. So you can see, because from what happened at that age, now immoralities began to happen. You know, the uncle introduced porn into the equation. So you can see all the manner of seeds that was being what sown. And a lot of people can say, hey, because I'm now born again, all of those things have been wiped away. No, there were seeds that were sown before I became born again. And those sins are what? They've born, <laughs> they're now bearing fruits. So now you can see that even being born again, it was still affecting.
But he says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So immediately I saw the truth that broke off immediately. Can you see that dimension? That broke off immediately. So now this is the dimension why I said a lot of people, you need to pray for those working in homosexuals, you know, in homosexuality, you know, and because of that, you don't know how majority of them ended up that way. It could be trauma. It could be child abuse. It could be that they were raped and eventually it led them to that. That is why majority of the time when you basically speak to them, they will tell you, how can God exist and allowed me to go through that in itself? But because they might not understand the mystery of God, helping them to understand that it was not God who planted that. It was Satan. They blame God for what Satan did. <laughs> so they would not want to hear the truth because I have always questioned that too. Lord, why did you allow me to go through it? But then he came to a point, he said, he did it. I did not allow it. They took advantage of you. And then now look at the healing. Sharing this is bringing revelation and testimony and freedom to somebody else. I believe the reason why I'm sharing this is because this is somebody's journey. You've been through this dimension and the father wants you to understand that it was not your fault. The struggles that you're having is not your fault. Can I share a dimension with you? I remember recently, you know, uh, uh, when I, every time I'm praying, you know, I, I'm like, what is all this immorality? You know, why am I going through, you know, father, this thing, you know, has been broken off a long time ago. So why am I still experiencing that in itself? Do you know what the Lord said? He said, the synagogue that you were in before, <laughs> the leader that was there, you know, he was he was one of those that was sleeping. <laughs> Even though I was accused of sleeping with somebody and they were accusing me, they came to my house and they were persecuting that he himself was basically sleeping with somebody in there. Hence why the place was empty. So you can see what the enemy does. They put you in that situation and then they blame you for being there. So you can begin to understand it. You know, that's why I say majority of you, what happened to you is not your fault. And for some people, you knowingly went and done this. Can we go to the Bible? Because that's why I shared about the dimension of Joseph, right? Because Joseph, you know, it was not Joseph's fault, but yet the wife blamed him. The husband did not inquire. That's why I said to you, many people are blaming you. Though, they, you know, they are supporting their friends. Oh, she, she's my friend. I believe her. Oh, he's my friend. I believe him. Oh, he's my friend. I believe him. Oh, they are my parents. I believe them. Not understanding that that in which you're believing could actually be false because there's an accusation in the spirit. So now this is where I want us to look at it from the dimension of what? From the dimension of First uh, Corinthians. Sorry, from the dimension of Second Samuel. Second Samuel, Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter 34. You remember, we said the accuser of the brethren who accuses them day and night has been what? Hurled down. So the Bible says, now Dinah, the daughter Leah, the, do the daughter Leah had born to Jacob, went out to visit the woman of the land. When Shechem, son of Hamor, the Hivite, the ruler of the area, saw her, he took her and raped her. His heart was drawn to Dinah, daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. And Shechem said to his father, Hamor, get me that girl as my wife. When Jacob heard that his daughter Dinah had been defiled, his sons were in the field with his livestock, so he did nothing until they came home. So you can begin to understand. The reason why I shared from the first dimension is because of 2 Samuel, before I come to this. He said, you know, Jonathan, son of Saul, you know, had a son who was named in both feet. He was not lame in the beginning. No, he was not lame. He had both feet. He was intact. And this is why I helped you to understand that what? You were born blameless. You were born faultless. You were born without any, any accusation at all. So people who used to say that it all started we are, because it, it was the sin of Adam. You didn't begin in Adam. You began with Christ. So when you came into this realm, you came, you know, in the dimension of Christ, even though you're still going to be reconciled to him. So Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. Now, they tell you the reason why he was lame. He said the nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled. His name is Mephibosheth. So you can see that Mephibosheth was not lame from the beginning, but it was because of what was happening. And the nurse picked him up as she was leaving. You know, she dropped him. And upon dropping him, he became. 
So this is what I was explaining to you, that because of your uncle, auntie, father, all those people who did what happened to you, this is why the struggle to come into the fullness of who you are is manifesting in your life. Is it the abortion? You did the abortion, right? It was not your fault. Some of you is because the person did not want to, you know, take responsibility for it. And because of that, it happened. Now you're blaming yourself. Guilt. Can you see? Now trying to rise out of it. But the father says it's not your fault because he loves you so very much. There is no disgrace, no shame. So you can see from that dimension where I was sharing what happened in my childbirth. I mean, sorry, when I was very young. Now we come to the dimension of those who actually did the rape right? Because in Genesis 26, they raped. And when the rape happened, look at what eventually happened. The son came back, they told the story, and then they went, they invited the man, they said, hey, have a circumcision happen. And through the circumcision, they began to what? They destroyed that whole entire nation. So you can see how rape or the accusation of rape can basically bring losses in the lives of the people. Yes, it can. It can bring losses in the lives of the people. It sure can. So this is where you begin to understand that dimension. That what? This is what the Father is trying to take you to help you to understand. To God what? Be the glory. Amen and amen. So now you can see it, that this is the reconciliation that he has always wanted right from the very beginning. Because some of you, you actually did the rape. You know, and because of the rape that you, you know, you've committed, now you've paid the price for it. You went to jail. And because you went to jail, look at all that happened. Losses began to happen. Now you can't find a job. Now you can't open a bank account. Because when they tell you to explain the reason why you went to jail, they can't give you a job. So now you have to go and find something menial to do. So you can see the losses. Maybe you were destined to be what? You were destined to be an accountant. You were destined to be wealthy, a lawyer, prominent, because you're brilliant, you're amazing, you're smart. That is who he has called you to be. But because of what happened and the rape and the accusations, you can see that. Because every time they tell you, you need to fill out a form, we need to do a security check, that comes back and says, this man was raped. This man was raped. Uh, you know, this person raped this person. This woman raped this person. And now, because of that, you can get a job. So you can see that in itself. And this is the mercy the Lord is wanting to show each and every person who was either accused of it. Let's go to another dimension of the book of 2 Samuel, which we've seen time and time again. The story of Amnon and Tamar, which we have all seen. Remember, the Bible tells us that in the course of time, Amnon, son of David, fell in love with Tamar. So this all started with love. And eventually, and Amnon had an advisor. So you can see, first of all, that was just wrong. The wrong counsel. The advisor began to give the wrong counsel. This is why majority of you, you need to start praying for your ministry, for your business, that the Lord will surround you with the right counsel. This is a prayer point. It's never too late to start praying this because some of you, you're going to have great ministries. Some of you, you're going to have big businesses. And it's important that's why the Bible says in the multitude of, you know, can you see the, even the government that when they're surrounded by the wrong counsel, they make wrong decisions. So this is why you have to pray for the government, that they are surrounded with the right counsel. So in your ministry, in your marriage, in your relationships, Father, surround me with the right counsel. Because we can see in the Bible where Ahab surrounded himself with the wrong prophets. <laughs> he surrounded himself with prophets who were speaking lies to him. He died. Can you see that dimension? So I pray that the Lord will basically what? Establish a right counsel all around you. I shared a video concerning this, listening to the right counsel. The wrong counsel can bring you to downfall. The right counsel can raise you. But we understand that the spirit that we are is the spirit of counsel, Isaiah chapter 11. So the Bible tells us in, in, in the book of 2 Samuel 13, it says that what? It says, you know, the counselor now began to give him, you know, the advisor now began to give him this counsel. Go to bed, pretend to be ill. Jonadab said, when your father comes to see you, say to him, I would like my sister to come and give me something to eat. Let her prepare the food in, the, my, in my sight so I may watch her and eat from her hand. So look at the counsel. He was leading her. So what kind of friends are you surrounded by? What kind of relationship is all around you? Can you see that dimension? Because most of the time, the Lord can say, I don't want you to listen to anybody around you. I need you to listen to me. Why? Because the people around you, they might have what? Something might have happened that they might all be speaking something that is so against. But the Lord is saying, as you focus on me, I will give you the way. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered. 
I know the book of Proverbs tells us that in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. That is not always true. Ask the government because in the multitude of counsel, they still make the wrong decisions. So that is not always true. Yes, but when you listen to Jesus, Holy Ghost and the Father, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you can see that. So you can begin to see that he was given the wrong counsel. And what happened? He laid down, pretended to be ill. And from that, it just the downfall just began. David sent word to Tamar at the palace. Go to your brother and prepare him some food. Because David eventually listened to a wrong counsel too. <laughs> can you see that dimension? He listened to his son because that was rooted in the wrong counsel. So you can see how the wrong counsel can begin to affect everybody. It came to Tamar. From Tamar, it came to David. <laughs> can you see that dimension? So you now can see. He said, now send everyone out. He sent everyone out. And what? He brought, they brought the food to his hand. Tamar did. Took the bread. He grabbed her. He said, come to bed with me, my sister. He said, don't do such a thing. You're going to disgrace me. But he refused to listen. And because he was stronger. So can you see? He was stronger. So what? He did what? He raped her. So majority of you, this is what has happened. Because the wrong counsel led you to that. And what is the wrong counsel? Wrong relationships. Wrong friendships. I'm sure this will basically minister to some uh, either ladies or to some men. I'm going to start with men first. You know when your friends, when they basically tell you, oh, look at that girl. <laughs> She's so beautiful, right? <laughs> She's so beautiful. I bet you can't get her. I bet you can't get her. And you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying your best to get her. You're doing everything and she basically would not what? She would not allow it. And the next thing you're doing, you're basically taking, you know, you're basically either giving her food, you're trying to give her all of these things to lure her into what is not supposed to be right from the very beginning. And it eventually leads to what? Leads to either you forcefully being with her because you want to impress your friends. And for the girls too, you know it is wrong to do that in itself. So what do you do? You basically, because you love him so very much, you can't do with him. You can't do without him. He has said no to you, but you, you're like, no, I must have him. And he's, you know, because probably he's talking to other people that you might not like. And for that, you probably got jealous and you went after him, did all manner of things and you got hold of him. I'm going to share that too in another light, because that is the third dimension I want to speak about. So for that reason, this is why rape came in, you know, and for some people, it's not what you did. But people accused you of it. And this is why I said people accused you of it. And I'm going to share this story. I've shared my story about the university quite a number of times. And I'm going to share uh, this dimension uh, of truth as well. So uh, uh, some, I met somebody, you know, uh, you know, at uni. And eventually, you know, we were seeing, we're basically talking and things like that. And we decided to go on a holiday, you know, just not a, just a short weekend break, you know, took time off and basically went on a break with this person. And we went to another city. And in that city, we all got there. You know, we both got there. And, you know, we bought drinks. <laughs> you know, as this many years ago, we got drinks and we, we stayed at the hotel. And we went out, we saw, we basically walked around and came back and we just began to drink together. We're there drinking and just enjoying ourselves. And eventually, sexual immorality happened. And what happened right after the next day? And she began to say to me, I, I didn't consent to that. And I'm like, you didn't? <laughs> you know, in that moment, it didn't feel funny, you know, and that was like, wow, really? She said, no, I didn't consent to it. And I'm like, wow. So I began to apologize. I said, I am so sorry, you know, for all of this. I, I really apologize. She said it was okay. It was okay. And, you know, the relationship continued from then on. Eventually, you know, I believe it, it just basically uh, disintegrated from there. Why? I believe perhaps it was because of the accusation that was manifesting from that in itself. Perhaps it's the people that she went and told. I don't know who she told or things like that. So in that moment in time, you know, my, my thought has always been going to that. Like, hey, Father, you know, help me to understand it. And it was helping me to understand that, hey, the reason why you're probably afraid of women is because of what that person spoke. Because somebody keeps coming to you to accuse you, either in your dreams, that that is what you did. And I'm like, what? Really? You know, <laughs> so it's a place where, like I was sharing, majority of you, probably because the relationship did not what? End the way the person thought it would end. They began to speak of you in a manner that is not good. And for that reason, somebody must have taken what that person said, took it in another context, and then began to what? Accuse you of it.
Can you see that? So I give God the glory because he showed me mercy concerning it. So it's a place for some people, you know, taking people without their consent. And for some people, you did it what? You did it, you know, you just raped the person. And the Lord wants you to help you to understand that what? Your sins are forgiven of you. So it is in that I want to come to the third dimension. Because after I left uni, you know, after uh, quite a long time, I met somebody and we just began to, we began to relate to one another. And in that moment, you know, after that relationship came to an end, I was like, nope, I'm just, I just want to be by myself. You know, I basically walked away from that in itself. So many years later, like I said, I was always having dreams. Somebody will come, you know, like accused of rape, accused of this, accused of that. And I was trying to help ask the Lord to help me to understand what the root of it is. And the Lord was showing me that that person that you were with, first of all, that person, somebody forcefully slept with her. And I'm really, I was like, what does he mean by forcefully slept with her? And the Lord said, you know, I believe I've shared this dimension when I was sharing that, you know, some people you've dated and you didn't know that they were married until after you left because they never told you. And this is one of the dimensions. So the Lord was basically helping to understand as well. And he was saying, you see that person, somebody, because the girl kept saying no to that person, you know, she kept saying no, she kept saying no, she kept saying no. What the man did was he went through witchcraft, went to a witch doctor or a sorcerer collected whatever ring or whatever it is or a charm and then began to use the charm on that girl so every time he wanted to lay with the girl he would use the charm so the girl would sleep with him and by the time they're done the girl will not remember that that has happened can you see that dimension because she said no now he was using other schemes and method and this has happened to so many sisters this has happened to so many brothers and i believe i've shared my own testimony where i said no it is not something i want i don't want it i don't want to do it not at all you know we stay friends and the person went and began to what put poison put all manners of charm in food and in drinks in order to what to sleep with me so you can see that some people, they say no, but because of it, I was, that's why I was sharing that the person was working in witchcraft in, in that dimension too, because, you know, it was all manners of witchcraft happening. So it's a place that this has happened to sisters. This has happened to brothers out there that because you said no, you said no, just like Joseph did. Can you see some people went and what? done all manners of witchcraft, done all manners of things just to lay. So that's why some of you, I love that person. I love that person like it did with Amnon. Can you see that? I love that person. I love that person. But that love was not genuine. They would tell you they love you. They would tell you they want to be with you. They would love, tell you they would do, they would, they, they want, they don't want to have, you know, they want, they don't want anybody else. It's just going to be you. But you don't understand that your reaction to their words is not you because on a normal day, it is not what you want to do. That is why Romans chapter 7 tells you what I want to do, I don't do. And what is this, what it is that I don't want to do, that is what I end up doing. Why? Because he was sold as a slave to what? He was sold as a slave to sin. So because somebody had gone and paid a price to a witch doctor, to a sorcerer, you know, had gone and done something behind the scenes, laced your food with all manners of charms, you ate it, now you, are, you don't know why you're in love with that person. You ate it, you don't know why you can't do without that person. You ate it, you drank it, you don't know why I just need to basically sleep with this person. Can you see that dimension? Because it's all rooted in witchcraft. So three dimensions, accusations, you didn't do it, the rape, you did it, then forcefully, without their consent, <laughs> using witchcraft. So you can see those three dimensions. Now, this is where the Lord is wanting to show mercy. Because with what Amnon did, can you see that those three dimensions, one brought losses, right? They raped who? Dinah. The second brought losses. They killed Amnon. The third, he was what? He was, he went in an unjustified manner. He went to prison for something he did not do. But the Lord brought vindication. So you can see that in itself. The Lord brought vindication with one and with the other two, the mercy of God. So this is where for majority of you that have been accused, wrongly of this dimension, I want to release the mercy of God over you. 
for those of you that you did this knowing it and you have repented of it, I want to release the mercy of God over you. And for some of you who have done this in the past by forcefully sleeping with somebody against their will, they didn't want to do it, but through witchcraft, you went and done it anyway. I want to release the mercy of God over you in Jesus mighty name. Amen. So that's what the Lord wants you to understand in this hour and the favor that is upon you because it is not his will that anyone should perish but come to the everlasting life. So it's a place where the Lord is going to begin to take you to those places and he's going to begin to show you the truth and the truth will begin to set you free. So for some of you, he's going to show you the roots of how that rape began. He's going to show you what happened. And for some of you, you already know what happened and he's going to begin to heal those places because he wants to give you a new beginning. Yeah. Yes, he wants to give you a new beginning. So people have rejected you because of this. People have mocked you because of this. People have shamed you because of this. People have walked away because of this. People have basically, you know, they've just left you. Remember the story of the Good Samaritan, the Levites, the priests, and then the Good Samaritan? So like the person who was wounded on the floor, you needed help. You know, the pastor came along. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I can't deal with this. He went on because he's so busy or whatever reason it is. You know, the Levites came along. And you would think the Levites who has basically been given the charge, you know, in the Holy of Holies, will basically carry them and nurture them and restore them. But he too, he walked on by. But the person who basically did not even belong to that part of the family came along, placed you on his donkey, took you to the inn, rubbed oil and began to what? Begin to restore. And this is the restoration because for a long time you've been left wounded. For a long time you've been left injured. For a long time you've been left hurt. For a long time you've been left shamed. For a long time, you've been left disgraced. For a long time, you've been walking around and believing that it was your fault all along. But the Lord is reconciling. I'm reconciling all things to work it together for my good because your testimony is the spirit of prophecy. And because of the greatness that is inside of you is the reason why I'm bringing you into a dimension that your story, begin, as you begin to tell it, is going to begin to bring compassion. It's going to bring restoration and conviction to the hearts of the people that they will be restored into fullness of who I am. And that as they go forth, just as my son resurrected on the third day, this is your resurrection and you're going to begin to see many come and they're going to begin to receive healing because it is the dimension of reconciliation that is manifesting upon your life. Now is the hour, now is the time for you to rise up from that pit that they've thrown you in because those who dug those pits for you to fall in, they themselves shall fall into it because that is what they did. They dug a pit for Daniel. They threw Daniel in it. The angel of the Lord shut the mouth of the lions and God himself came and brought him out. He said, oh king, my angel, the angel, the Lord sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lions so that I will not be harmed. And the king said, roll away the stone and bring out Daniel. The angel of the Lord came. He rolled away the stone and sat on it. He said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? They thought you were dead. They left you in that situation. They accused you of that rape. They accused you of all that you did, even though you did it. They didn't want to give you a chance or the opportunity. But the Lord looks at you because his eyes searches to and fro and he has found you. And he said, though they rejected you, I have accepted you in the beloved. Hence the reason why I'm giving you this new beginning to go forth and reconcile through what you have been through. And this will be the testimony of their what? Of their freedom because of what you have brought through for them to walk in freedom. Amen. And amen. And I just want to release this as a disclaimer, right? I really want to release this as a disclaimer because I, I, you know, I believe the Lord basically encouraged me to share this. There are some people, you know, also, you know, in line with this, maybe you were raped or accused of rape and pregnancy probably ensued or something happened. And, you know, and for that in itself, you have helped people to, you know, you've paid for people to abort children. You know, you've paid for people to abort. And what do I mean by paid? I will share with you what happened to me when, uh, before I left Nigeria. I had this neighbor, right? And this neighbor used to come to me every single time and say, Dapo, I need to buy 
a, a jam form and a jam form really is what people use uh, it's an exam that people write before they can go into university and this person was always coming to me and she was always requesting because she needed to buy a jam form and i'm like why haven't you asked your dad and she said maybe I, I don't know what story she gave she gave a story i'm not sure what story it was and i said okay not to worry i will help you with the form and i said okay i will help you with it so i got money together and i gave her the money for the form only for years to come, I believe this was last year, the Lord began to show me the truth. Because every time I was praying, I, you know, my, my thoughts kept going to the moment of that form when I gave her the money. And I was trying to ask the Lord, what is the accusation concerning that? Because I realized there was an accusation coming from that. And the Lord began to share. And he said to me, he said, that person did not actually come to ask for money for the jam form. It's because they were pregnant. So the money that you gave them, was used to terminate the pregnancy. So you can see, this is where the Lord is helping you to understand that some of you, you've paid in ignorance. You did not know. And some of you, you probably knew. <laughs> can you see that dimension? You probably knew. <laughs> and that's the reason why the accusation keeps coming against you that, hey, you know, you have blood on your hands. You have blood on your hands because you paid for somebody's child to be aborted. Maybe the person wanted to keep the baby if the girl had told them concerning it but you decided to partake in it. So I want to speak the mercy of the Lord over you at the same time. And if you've done this, just go before the Father. Just repent of it. And your sins are forgiven of you. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you all so very much. You all are the blessedness of the Father. To God be the glory. This is a new beginning upon your life. And upon this in itself, reconciliation is manifesting over you. You're born to be great. Remember that. Herod has nothing over you. Pharaoh has nothing over you. Look at the sky. The star shines ever so brightly. And that is you shining upon creation. Because your hour has come for your reconciliation and your manifestation. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. Stay blessed. Amen.